National Security Advisor Ajit Doval has reminded the world leaders that terrorism in all its forms and manifestations and its financing are amongst the most serious threats to international peace and security. He was speaking at Shanghai Cooperation Organization in New Delhi. Many believe that the reference was Pakistan-sponsored terrorism. According to several others, terrorism belonged to a bygone era and the world is facing many problems more important than this. Their assessment comes from a US-centric view of the world, where terrorism started in 2001 with 9-11 attacks, added with a distinct empiricism where numbers matter more than anything else. They argue that the number of terrorist attacks in India have come down significantly during the last decade with comparatively fewer fatalities. Therefore, the threat is significantly reduced. In fact, these people either don't understand the very aim of terrorism or try to mislead others. Decreased incidents of bombings, shootings, hijackings and other overt Violent activities do not mean that terrorists are silent. To understand, one has to go back to the very definition of terrorism. Professor Leonard Weinberg and William Yobank in their book, The Roots of Terrorism, What is Terrorism Right? And I quote, Publicity and psychology are at the heart of terrorism. Unquote. Terrorism is to cause terror is a very superficial understanding of the term. In fact, Weinberg argues terrorism is a kind of politically motivated violence in which publicity sending a message plays a crucial role. So, one of the most important aspects of terrorism is to send a political message to a large public. The most important goal of terrorists is to publicize their point of view. Hijackings are a case in point. They pay high dividends as media coverage of the demands takes their message to millions of people without much effort. Hijacking to get Masood Azhar released in 1999 gave him public attention he never enjoyed before. So, if you are arguing that since the 26-11 attack in Mumbai in 2008, terrorist activities are on a decline, think again. Think again. Since then, the internet and hence social media has revolutionized communication methods like never before. Now, they do not need a larger spectacle of bomb blasts to attract media. Corey E. Dober and Kamal Ilter in their essay, The Relationship Between Social Media and Radicalization, argue that social media platforms can significantly increase the audience size for messages created by extremist groups. They say, and I quote, For the first time ever, terrorists are able to cut out the middlemen. They are reliant on no one else to get their message out. They don't have to hope that journalists will represent their message as they themselves would have wanted it represented. The groups can send out the message they want sent out the way they want it sent out because it will be seen unedited." Unquote. In India, Burhan Wani and Amrit Pal show that in this internet age, without indulging in violence of the scale of previous decades, panic and radicalization among the public can be achieved. India is facing a threat where foreign-sponsored Twitter handles, YouTube channels and Facebook pages based in and out of the country are trying to create a panic among Indians, radicalize vulnerable youth and malign national image at international stage. This is what terrorism is by the very definition. Peter Kropotkin, a 19th century anarchist, referred to terrorism as propaganda by deed, a means by which small groups can attract attention to a political cause, no matter what the cause may be. Do I need to explain more that how India is facing the threat of terrorism more than ever before and why, as a nation, we need to prioritize the fight against the terrorists. Thank you.